Hi there. Today we've got some golf club irons to re-chrome. Now these are made by Mizuno and they have their own special plating process that they call layers of feel. Now it's a four layer process where you put nickel and then copper, then nickel and chrome. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the set of golf club heads. Although at first glance they don't look to be too bad, when you see them close up you can see that there's all sorts of scratches in them, dents and marks that are going to need to be taken out and little bits of damage here and there. In a real close up you can see they are in a little bit of a poor condition. Now first job that we always do is we list and book the work in, then we take a photograph of it and that gets printed out and it gets put with the job where it travels around the workshop with it. The first thing that's got to happen to these golf club heads is they've got to be stripped back to bare metal. Now what's happening here is we've just got to remove the paint from in the recesses so this is just a strong paint stripper and after it's been in there for a time it'll come out and it'll get a rinse might need a scrub just to make sure the paint's off the recesses. You would think that the acids and stuff that we use to remove all of the uh, original plating would get rid of things like paint and grease and dirt but it gets rid of none of it. All of that just stops it from stripping properly and causes more problems down the line. So here they are, they're being fitted onto copper hooks so that they can be put in this stripper now what we're going to do here, this is mainly sulfuric acid and we're going to actually reverse the process and there we go and we're actually stripping the metal off. So in this instance the workpiece is the anode instead of the cathode so it takes the plating off back to the bare metal. Then rinsed off in water and there they are ready to go into the polishing shop. Now here we are in the polishing shop. Now the first operation is something that we call cutting out where we try and cut out all of the marks that are in there that need removing whether that's from corrosion or in this case mainly damage and being smacked on surfaces etc. You've got to be very careful with these abrasive belts not to actually cause damage so this job is far more skilled than it actually looks. It's very very easy to remove metal from the wrong place and once you have it's in, well almost impossible to put it back. Now on these golf club heads we're actually starting off with a much finer grade than we would say if we were doing a car component because we're trying to remove the least amount of metal that is possible to achieve a good finish. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and if you hit the notification bell, we'll let you know when a new video is uploaded. It's a very careful process, got to go really gently with these items. Now we've changed to a different type of tool altogether, this is what's known as a felt. Now it's actually quite, it, it is made from felt but it's quite a hard wheel and it's used for getting into grooves. Now we've changed again to another wheel. Now this is a mop but it's dressed up with an abrasive compound so 
that will go into recesses but in a soft way so you can actually push that into recesses whereas with a felt that has to be made and shaped to fit the article now we're going over it with another mop dressed up with what's called a sateen compound the same thing as before now we're trying to achieve a pretty fine finish on this the grease that you saw him put on is just to reduce the cut and make it a bit finer now there's the final wheel that's going on now this is actually a brush now we're going to use a polishing compound and apply quite a lot of weight to brush the abrasive marks out once all the marks are out and it's ready for the plating shop and there we go finished and those are polished ready for plating now we're in the plating shop the first thing we have to do is to put these on copper wires or jigs or in this case we're clipping them onto copper hooks so that we can pass an electric current through them after all it is electroplating so the first thing is into a soapy cleaner gloves on because they've got to be given a good wipe over as in all things with plating cleanliness is king although it's a really dirty job all the work has to be superbly clean in fact just being degreased and clean isn't enough it's got to go into this tank here now what's going to happen is we're going to pass an electric current through it and this is going to blast any oxides off the surface of the metal and this leaves it in what's called an active state so that it will accept the plating properly and the plating will adhere to it now we're going through a rinse system from dirtier water to progressively cleaner water there's the clean water there coming in now the next tank it's going to go into is a dilute sulfuric acid which is basically not much stronger than vinegar and all that does it sort of acts like a finger bowl to remove any soap residue that might be on there final rinse and then it's going to go in for the first of the four layers which is a nickel plating we're replicating the Mizuno's layer of feel process which is four layers so the first one is a layer of nickel so after that's been in there for a little while we're going to pull that out quick inspection to make sure they're alright now it's going to go through the same rinse procedure that it goes through before into the dilute acid again and then this time we're going into an acid copper solution the acid copper goes on to quite a good thickness in a reasonable amount of time so it's what you might call a high build type of plating we often use it for putting metal onto parts that are too thin when we're restoring old vintage and classic car parts now it's coming out of the copper it's been in there for the best part of an hour and it's a rinse everybody always loves the colour of the copper it looks absolutely fantastic it's almost a shame that we're now going to carry on and do the final two layers which is of course back through the rinse system then we're going back into the nickel tank as we did before now we're going to put a much thicker deposit of nickel on this time round than we did before the first one 
was what's called a strike coat where you just put a small amount on now we're out of the nickel now all the good looks and the weather protection are from the nickel layer think of the copper being sort of like a high build primer which is the sort of job that it does the only reason that we have to put a strike coat of nickel on beforehand is you can't plate steel with acid copper now we're going into the final process which is the chrome tank and there we go it's being built up with a layer of chrome this is actually the thinnest layer out of all of them although when it comes to these golf club heads we actually put a thicker coating on than we would normally in the chrome the reason being is we're going to put a texture on the face of them by blasting them and we don't want to wear through the chrome so after the chromic acid has been neutralized and rinsed we're just going to hang them up wait for the water to dry so we can carry on Now where we applied more chrome than normal we've got what they call chrome burn on the edges where it goes grey and matte on the edge. What we've got to do with this is polish it off. So this is just a very soft mop and we're going to use some very fine polishing compound and with that we're going to polish the chrome burn off. Like all things with polishing and plating, it's more skilled than it looks because you've got to polish it enough without going through. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be told when we upload new videos. Now the chrome mopping's complete, that's the last part of the chroming process. The final thing we've got to do to these golf clubs is to put that texture on the striking face. So we're going to do that with a blaster, but before we can blast it, we're going to have to mask it up. Now all of the chrome area is masked, we can now move on to the blaster. So inside the blaster, we're going to blast them. It's a relatively simple process, it's just a case of doing it evenly. That way you get the same texture over the whole of the face. Once the blasting's complete, it's just take off the tape, wipe off any debris from the blaster, and then we just need to paint all of those numbers and logos into the clubs. So fill it with paint, wipe off the excess. After that's been wiped over with some thinners after the paint's dry, it'll look absolutely spot on. Now these Mizuno heads are completely finished, painted with the four layer process that Mizuno use. It's time for some close up so you can see how they've come out. And don't they look good, sparkling like jewels. These are finished to a far finer standard than they ever were when they were new. I'm sure you'll agree, anybody would be proud to have these gracing their golf bag. <laughs>